Every day now, I'm beginning to understand more and more why some women don't listen to male rappers. During the 70s, there were a lot of events that took place that affected our community. Some good, like representation, good music, and even the rise of the Black Panther Party, which has been rumored to be traumatic for some of the women who were a part of it, but that's another video for another day. But the griefs of the deaths of Malcolm X and MLK, riots that took place, rivalry amongst each other, and one thing that I can't forget, the disrespect, shortcomings, and hatred towards black women. Now, I believe that the disrespect towards black women began long before the 70s. We've had a gender war going on that stems all the way back to the beginning of time, which is one of the main reasons why we are in the state that we're in in America today. But I was specifically focusing on the 70s because it was one of the most influential times of being for all people across the nation. It is a decade that raised those who are considered the greatest rappers ever to walk this earth. It is a decade that raised the parents of those responsible for hip-hop being where it is today. And essentially, it is a decade that started hip-hop. When hip-hop first started, it was all about having fun. The artists and DJs' main focus was to provide an outlet for people who look just like them. Getting them to dance with their beats, getting them to vibe with the storytelling of their rhymes, it was all the pinnacle of fun at the time. And not only did they have fun, they always had a message. Some deep, some revolutionary, and some surface level. But above all, there was a message. From the 70s all the way up until today, this influential way of rhyming was popularized. But along the way, there were a few rappers who came in with their own style that blazed a trail that would last for almost 30 years now. Those who made it very clear that their music was for party and bullshit culture. Dr. Dre. Eazy-E. Jock and the bitch. Snoop Dogg. Of the sea back. Biggie Smalls. In the TP. Oh. As a and with that party and culture came the disrespect and dehumanization of women. With more emphasis on black women. The fact that this kind of rap has taken some of the worst times and turned it to the best. Relieved millions of people from stress and provided everyone with good music to party to, doesn't mean that it's all bad. But it is bad when the lyrics make a certain group feel like humans and another group feel like objects. And I don't want to sound like I'm hating on this style of hip-hop because hip-hop is a form of art. And with art, we need all parts. We need diversity. We need some revolutionary, some conscious, and some just to use as an escape to party and bullshit. The only thing I'm hating on is that some of the content and a lot of what the foundation of party and bullshit rap is built on is at the expense of women. And this is not to say that these rappers aren't talented or great at what they've done. This is to say that they've aided in the fall of our community in the toxic culture of most parts of hip hop. And I don't mean that it's all their fault because no one source can create such a powerful movement. If they could, KRS-One and Wu-Tang would be much bigger than they were Nas wouldn't be so taboo, and Tupac wouldn't have been targeted and silenced. Like the rise and fall of the Black Panther Party all over again. To say this without saying too much, if you understand what I'm saying, then you know. Not only did that help the demise of the hip-hop culture, women allowed it to happen. They played their songs, and they wanted autographs from abusers and people who objectify their gender. And essentially became delusional. Delusional in a sense of separation, a sense of wanting to join a team that doesn't value them, a sense of selling out their own sisters for the validation of those who also want validation from men. And it's funny because in order to listen to hip-hop as a woman, in all kinds of hip-hop nowadays, the conscious kind and the party and bullshit kind, you sort of have to be delusional. You have to be able to have some sort of separation for what's real and what's not, for who you are and who you aren't, for what is acceptable and what isn't, for what your values are and what they aren't. Because the way women used to be able to turn to the conscious hip-hop community for a loving embrace has slowly and surely become old news due to the misogyny that runs rampant in hip-hop. Overall, as a young woman growing up and observing the world around me, I have learned to take everything with a grain of salt. The perspective of men, the perspective of hip-hop, and even the perspective of some women. As everyone on this earth is insecure, lost, trying to find where they belong, searching for a sense of importance, and are in the process of growing and evolving. So although hip-hop may hate women, the most important thing is that women don't hate women and that women don't hate themselves.